Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a book haul with you guys with a little bit of curriculum. So mostly a book haul, but there is a little bit of curriculum that I also wanna share with you that I am checking out and reviewing and also wanted to share with you in case it fits something you might be looking for. Um, in my last video, I shared a curriculum haul, mostly from the good and the beautiful. And I shared that I'd be talking today about books and sharing books that I do not have to worry about in terms of content for my children. And this is something I get asked about a lot, both here and on Instagram is how do I choose books that I know I'm going to feel comfortable with, that I know align with my values, that I know aren't going to have some kind of hidden content in them. That really isn't something that I want my children reading or being exposed to or being implied in their minds. And so I shared that one of the main ways that I do that is getting books from the good and the beautiful because I know how strongly they value that same thing, making sure that the materials and resources that are getting into children's hands are God honoring and not filled with things that as Christian parents, we wouldn't want our children exposed to. And so a lot of the books that I'll be sharing today are from The Good and the Beautiful, but also from a couple of other places, one of which is Good and True Media. So I have their brand new release that I'll share with you today. They are a smaller um, Christian publishing company that publishes books that are good and true and God honorings. So they are another main place that I get books for my children. And then lastly, from Why We Am Publishing, and I have another book bundle from them. If you remember, maybe even almost a year ago now, I don't even remember, I did a collaboration with them where I curated a five book bundle of books from the Christian Heroes Then and Now series, which my older two kids and I really enjoy reading together and them reading independently. We went on a trip recently and my son read the Corey Ten Boom one in like 24 hours and he had already read a couple years ago The Hiding Place and it was like his favorite book of all time and he still wanted to read the Christian Heroes then and now version and really really enjoyed it and so what I've done this time around and collaborating with them is I created a book bundle of their books for younger readers and so i love the christian heroes then and now series we are currently reading mary slesser myself and my older two boys and we are really really enjoying it but it is for these are for 10 and up and i do agree with that and would even say maybe even 12 and up depending on your child um they don't hold back from telling the truth about the things that these missionaries have experienced and so while I want my almost eight-year-old to know about these missionary stories and know about the things that people have done for God and things like that, I don't quite feel comfortable with her sitting in on these. However, they do have the Heroes for Young Readers collection and they have Mary Slessor. So likely what I will do so that there aren't any spoilers is once I finish this up with my older two boys, I will read this with my eight-year-old, maybe even all of my kids because the illustrations look excellent. So while these are geared for younger kids, they really are beautiful and it's not like a couple words on a page. These are not like little, little kids picture books, but these could be an independent reader, something that they read independently. So I may even allow her to try to read this independently and see how she does or, um, these could be something to read, like I said, with all of your kids. So when I finish this one with the older boys, like go back and read this with everyone as a way to kind of connect and talk about this missionary's life in a way where everyone can feel included. So what I've done this time around is I've selected five of these for our younger children to be able to connect with missionary stories and learn about missionaries and not wait until they're older to really know about them and to know their stories. And so I chose Mary Slessor because we are currently reading this book, myself and my older two boys. So I chose Mary Slessor, Gladys Alward, Al Alward? This is one that we will be reading um, eventually. We have the 
Christian Heroes Then and Now version of it. So I grabbed this to do the same thing like I talked about with Mary Slessor. I grabbed Amy Carmichael because we will read this one in the future as well. Hudson Taylor because we also have this one in the Christian Heroes Then and Now series. And then also Jim Elliott. So these are the five books that are in my curated book bundle. You will be able to get all five of these books for $30, which is much less than it would be if you purchased each of them separately. So this is a great way to start your collection if you want to start reading your children missionary stories and for them to know about other Christians in different places in the world and missionaries and what that really is like for them and to start praying for missionaries that are currently missionaries and things like that. This is a great way to start your collection in an affordable way. And maybe you already have some of these books, but you don't have these particular ones. You can always grab this to add to that collection. So I'm really, really excited to partner with YWAM. The link to get this specific bundle at that discounted price is in the description box below. So I wanted to share these with you first because I'm so excited to partner with them again. I just love all of their books and probably will eventually own them all, but I digress. So I also mentioned Good and True Media. And so I will share with you next their brand new release, which is Growing Up With Patience. And it says, Patience was a little girl who oddly enough didn't possess a great deal of patience. She frequently fantasized about different names because she hadn't any idea why her parents would name her such a silly one. Patience struggles with being impatient about anything and everything, from learning to tie her shoe, to burning her tongue and scalding hot chocolate, to rushing others down the slide so that she can go. Patience simply doesn't understand why anyone would take their time or wait. Why wait when you can do things now? And then I'll just skip on to say, Families will enjoy and relate to the characters and growing up with patience while discovering that patience isn't just about waiting, but learning to trust and accept that God knows better than we do. So I feel like this is such a good topic, not only for children, but for us as adults as well. I love the vintage storybook vibes of this particular book. So I was really excited because I did get a sneak peek of this at the Teach Them Diligently conference. Good and True Media was there. And while I've worked with them for a couple of years now, I got to actually meet them in person, which was really cool. Um, and yeah, this is like a longer storybook. So you could do this like as, an, as a bedtime book that you do over the course of a couple months or a month, or you could do this for morning time. This would be really special. So I'm really excited about this. Um, I will link Good and True Media and my discount code for them down below. They have, we have probably almost every book that's been published through Good and True Media and my kids really love them. And um, I'm really excited to read this one with them. Next thing I wanna share before I get to um, the main bundle of books that I have, which is from The Good and the Beautiful, is something that is brand new to me um in a way so i've also shared in the past another collection of books that i really love are the tuttle twins books and these really are about teaching our children truths about the world that are contrary to kind of the way mainstream media presents these topics um like freedom of speech and free market and things like that and they're done in a storybook way for younger children to be able to start to understand how some of these things work. And I've even learned stuff reading them to my kids. So I really, really, really recommend the Tuttle Twins books if you wanna broach some of those tougher topics. Something that they came out with recently is their American history curriculum. And so I wasn't going to try it because we've covered a lot. Like we've done a lot with American history. And if you watch my curriculum picks videos, we are going to be moving on to um, ancient history next year and Vikings and Middle Ages. But we are still working through our Playful Pioneers curriculum from the Peaceful Press, which I really do love. So I don't wanna rush through it and I don't wanna stop it. But when we're done with that, we are gonna move on to a different time period. However, Tuttle Twins reached out to me and wanted to let me give a review about their 
American History curriculum that they've already released, and then this one, which just released on July 5th. And this is 1776 to 1791. So a shorter time period, but really digging into that important time in history. Whereas this one goes from 1215 to 1776. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through um, before we jump back into our Playful Pioneers curriculum, because we've taken just a little bit of a break, even though we don't fully break for summer, um, we've been doing a lot of traveling and just kind of like much lighter schooling, more unschooling vibes lately, um, which I'll talk about more in a future video once I get back into my monthly recaps and, and all of that. Um, which I kind of am taking a break from for the summer, but I'm going to figure out where we would be time period wise in our Playful Pioneers curriculum and see if I can sort of match up a little bit of learning from these and sort of try that out because I've shared in the past that that is geared towards elementary age and I kind of use it for all of my kids, even my middle schooler and my high schooler, but I just supplement where I feel the need. So this might be a fun way to add in more learning about those time periods um, where it fits. And so I love how this has a very narrative feel to it. And although it technically looks like a textbook, I promise you it does not read like a textbook. It reads more like a story. And I've shared a lot in the past how I really appreciate that style of learning. And if you're familiar with the Tuttle Twins books, it follows that same style, just covering larger sections of history instead of just a specific topic about the world, if that makes sense. So this is a brand new one. You can, when you order, enter to win a family trip about American history to Boston. And I'm really excited because I really wanna see someone win it because if you've noticed, like I love traveling as part of our learning, as part of our homeschooling, not as a separate thing or an added thing or just a field trip at the end, but as part of how we learn in our homeschool. And so do not miss out on your opportunity to enter into that. If you buy either one of these books, you will have an opportunity to enter in to win. And so I'm really excited about that. And I did not wanna miss this opportunity to share it with you guys over here. I did share it on Instagram a few weeks ago when these first came in the mail, but I wanted to make sure I shared it over here for those of you who are not Insta aren't on Instagram or maybe missed it. So if you are looking for American history curriculum and if you have not settled on it yet, it's definitely worth looking into the Tuttle Twins American history books. As I begin to use them, I will give you more detailed opinions on the content and how it's covered and things like that. So be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, you can go check it out at the link in the description box below. While we are on the topic of being careful about what we put in front of our children, books, media, all of the things, worldview, I want to talk about this a little bit and also sort of apologize for a couple of books that I have shared with you guys in book hauls. And so while I cannot pre-screen every single book and I am not perfect, I try to be really careful about what I share on my channel and do not want to promote anything that I would not use with my own children. So there are two books in particular that I shared in my last book haul video that I want to kind of talk to you about today that I've decided not to use with my own children. And there's a couple things that I want to touch on in this. And it's not only just about these two specific books, but it's also just a reminder to us as Christian moms to really be diligent in what we put in front of our kids and not allowing another Christian mom to be the Holy Spirit for us. So although we can learn from each other and we can recommend things to each other and we can even trust each other, right? Like God doesn't call us to be like, I don't trust anything anyone else says unless Holy Spirit says it, but really to have that discernment and to be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. And so I really want to encourage you guys to be careful what we're putting in front of our children. I have very strong convictions about things that are not God honoring. Um, I've shared a lot about that in the past. I've also shared about how 
I've planned to do things with my kids because it's something that's popular in the homeschool community, specifically the Christian homeschool community. So you think like all these Christian moms who I agree with and I respect and I look up to read these books to their kids. So these must be safe. And while that might be the case in a lot of situations, it is not necessarily the case across the board. And so one of the books that I was really excited about reading to my children this summer was The Wind in the Willows. This is a classic. This is like so many Christian homeschool moms who I really love and respect and I am not trying to judge or insult or saying I have better discernment or anything like that. I've heard read this book. I even got like the beautifully illustrated version. I mean, I flipped through these illustrations and I was like, this is such a nice book. Like, look at this artwork. Look at this beautiful cover, the hardcover version, all of the things until someone who I really respect on Instagram was reading this with their child and came upon the chapter that they said, I need to pause on this book as I seek the Lord about whether or not I can skip over this thing that I don't feel comfortable with or if I need to just stop reading this book with my kids. Now, I don't know what she decided, but I do know that it was enough for me to go take a look and decide not to use it. And that is what is, is really powerful about us as Christian moms, being able to discuss these things without feeling defensive, right? Without feeling condemned if we don't agree, but really allowing the work of the Holy Spirit to convict if necessary and to direct us and for us to be okay with being uncomfortable with decisions that we've made and allow the Lord to help us grow in protecting our kids from stuff that just doesn't need, it just, it isn't necessary. And so there's this chapter in here. I need to find it now. And it's the weird thing about it because I started to search on the internet about it. The weird thing is, it's one random chapter, and it's chapter seven, and it's called The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, okay? And if you look closely, you can almost miss it. There's some kind of creature there. Now, I didn't read through this whole chapter, okay? But she was talking about, can I skip over this section about a god? And I was like, I don't think I'm going to be skipping over that section. I'm probably not going to do it. Well, this looks very much to me like a mythical being, a demonic spirit, a pagan god. It also looks a lot like Tomnus from the Chronicles of Narnia, which is one of the main reasons why we don't read the Chronicles of Narnia, which I know is a really hot button topic because of many reasons, the Christian homeschool community loves C.S. Lewis. And I actually like a lot of his work as well. I had planned, I've talked about this before. I planned on using the Chronicles of Narnia with my children. I had bought the box set. I had unit studies lined up. I was ready to go and I did not have a piece about it. And the more I prayed about it, and the more I looked into it, I'm like, I am not comfortable with this. I don't care who uses this. I don't care if he was a Christian. That does not mean that it's safe spiritually. And so it might sound ridiculous to some people, and that's okay, I totally get it. But if your discernment is saying, mm, I don't know if I feel comfortable with this, lean into that. Don't ignore it because I'm going to give you an example of where I ignored it in just a minute. Okay. So I'm not saying like, I always listen to that. Be like me. No, it's a reminder for all of us. So I saw that and I was like, yeah, we're good. We're totally good. And then it basically is almost like hypnotizing them or doing something weird to them. Um, then the two animals crouching to the earth bowed their heads and did worship. So we have worship of a different God in Wind in the Willows. Now, I am sorry. 
but that doesn't honor God. So we will be getting rid of this book. I saved this book for the purpose of sharing it with you guys. Unfortunately, I have missed the return window and cannot get my money back for this book. But this book's going in the trash, which hurts my heart to throw away a seemingly beautiful book, but I don't wanna donate it. I don't want another family to have that. So I'm getting rid of this. Sorry, not sorry. Next book that I wanna to talk to you guys about is this book noticing. I was so excited about this book, you guys. I have loved Kobe Yamada's other books. This is one that as I flip through it, I love the concept about slowing down and noticing nature and, and all of the things. But there was one image in here that I was kind of like, oh, that's a little weird. Like, I don't think I like that. And then some that are so beautiful. Like, I love these illustrations. I love the vibe. Like, I was so excited to read this with my kids. But this is the page that I came across and I was like, oh, a phoenix? I don't think that's a godly thing. And I was like, all right, you're being overboard. Like, just calm down, relax. Well, one of you, after that book haul video, emailed me. The sweetest, most loving, kind email, but basically said, I feel like that book has some kind of like spiritism vibes in it. And talking about different cultures that believe in spiritism, which is that like spirits are inhabiting animals and that they communicate with us and all these different things. And they drew my attention to one specific page in here. Where is it now? Let me see if I can find it. They were kind of like on pedestals. I think it was actually in one of his other books. So now I'm gonna have to go back and look at the email and I will put it down in the description box below. But yeah, it's too new agey. And it's like something you can't always put your finger on, but if it doesn't sit right, like when in doubt, don't do it, don't use it. So. Another one that I'm sorry if you spent your money on this, I'm gonna be throwing this one out as well. And it's a beautiful, looks like a beautiful book. It's not easy to admit that you didn't notice something, but we have to be able to do that. I also wanted to share something from my friend Sam over at For the Love of Homeschooling, which if you've been around, you know how much I love For the Love of Homeschooling. I wanna share something that she asked me to share um, or, or she shared with me and then I asked her if she'd like me to share on her behalf because I was already going to be talking about a similar topic. And that is that there were some things in some of the curriculum from For the Love of Homeschooling, specifically Nature Study Club, that she was not aware was there. Um, that she came across as she was looking through things because she does not write all the curriculum anymore. She has curriculum writers and different people doing photos and reels and a bunch of different people including in this beautiful, um, this beautiful community of homeschool moms that she's basically like employed with how big and beautiful her company has become. And she came across it and said, I was really, really uncomfortable with some of it and do not want anything that is questionable about nature, about mother nature, about folklore or spiritism or anything like that. She does not want it. So she is taking her time to go through and remove anything. It would be like one page in the entire month long curriculum. And I had noticed them, but it's also not like a Christian curriculum. Although she is a Christian, she wanted it to be for everyone but didn't want to promote things that were ungodly. And so she is going through and removing those and being very careful in the future to comb through things and make sure that they're not in there. So if that is something that has turned you off in the past, I really just wanted to share that it will not be in there anymore. And also to share that the good that is coming from this is that she is creating free scripture packs that go along with the nature study topics from For the Love of Homeschooling. So for example, for the Eagle Unit Study, there is a scripture pack that goes along with it that is completely free. So whether you buy the curriculum or not, 
you can get the free supplement, the free add-on um, scripture pack so that if you want to make that nature study a curriculum or a Christian nature study, you have the resources there. But if you don't want to, you don't need to download that free supplement. But she is going to take the time to go through and make that available and they will always be free, which I feel like is really, really special. And so I wanted to share that in case you've been turned off by that in the past or it hasn't sat right with you or you decided it's not for your family because of that and just share that that is something that has been um, caught and changed and will be changed moving forward. So because of the length of this video, I think I am going to make my book haul from The Good and the Beautiful a part two because I don't want to rush through it. So I'm going to end this video for right now. We went over the Heroes for Young Readers book bundle that you can get for $30 for the next two months linked in the description box below. We went over Tuttle Twins history and Tuttle Twins books. They're linked down below. You can also enter to win that family vacation to Boston. We also went over Good and True Media and Growing Up with Patience, which is their new release. All of that will be linked in the description box below. And I will in part to share with you all of the books that I got from The Good and the Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found some good resources in here. I hope you were encouraged to be more diligent in just guarding our children's hearts and minds and spirits, as well as our own. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, you can follow me over there at rooted underscore home life. I hope to see you soon in my next video, which will be part two of this book haul. Until next time, stay rooted.